Hey guys, Kuji here with the COO of Zcoin, Ruben. Ruben. Uh, yeah, sorry we're having some live issues. Um, can you give our viewers the project's elevator pitch? <laughs> oh, gosh. Again. Okay, let's do this again. Let's do right. it again from the top. <laughs> so. So yeah, we are, you know, we've been around with Zcoin, we've been around since uh, September 2016. We're, we're traded on Huobi, Binance, uh, Bittrex. Uh, so we've been around for a while. We primarily focus on two main things. I mean, we do want to be a currency, so we're not really a smart contract platform. Uh, so we want to be a currency that's used and our two main pillars would be, I say, privacy and decentralization and we have unique technologies that we were the first to pioneer uh, that achieve both of this which i guess we can go into later and that's about it do you know who created the idea behind the coin like who is the original developer so the original developer behind it the guy called Paramin inson he's from thailand um he actually also founded vertcoin and um, he basically uh, studied at John Hopkins University uh, under Matthew Green, um, and you know he did his masters actually about zero coins. Like he wrote a paper called Zeronymous, uh, which talked about the first practical implementation of zero coin. And people may ask, well, you know, if he started Vertcoin, why didn't he stay with Vertcoin? But basically, right. when he did. Vertcoin, <clears throat> he had like ASIC resistance and privacy in mind. Uh, but what happened was that when he went to do his masters at John Hopkins, he didn't really have time to do it. And he actually started a merge mine coin with a uh, vert coin called Zero Vert. And it didn't get a good reception because people didn't really value privacy then. They were like, why do I need to use this like overly complicated right. system? And as a result, when, you know, there wasn't really much interest then, uh, Parman then said, okay, fine, uh, let's just start a new coin and let's focus on, on what uh, he really wanted to achieve, which was to implement zero coin. And we were the first ones to implement the zero coin protocol. Yep. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, did he bring anyone else from the Vertcoin team <coughs> over to Zcoin no, or is it just him? No, no. Um, it was just him and actually a co-founder, which turned out to be kind of scammy. Uh, uh so, <laughs> uh, yeah, we had like another co-founder. I wouldn't name him here, but, um, we also had some seed investors, including, uh, you know, well, the now infamous, uh, Roger Ver. Okay. <laughs> so, so he provided us some seed funding, you know, there's no such thing as ICOs then. And uh, basically, well, when within a month of launch or something, I think uh, our co-founder ran away with all our seed capital funding. So we had to really start from scratch. Like that was like rock bottom. <laughs> but yeah, you know, look where we are today. We're, we're, we're doing pretty well now. We have our funding back. And uh, I think we, I would consider ourselves, uh, you know, a decently funded, well-established coin at the moment. Definitely. I mean, yeah, you guys are uh, either in the top 100 or you're right on the brink of it. Hovering. <laughs> yeah, you're. <laughs> I think uh, last week when I looked, it was like 101, and then I think you guys moved up just a little bit, and then um, I'm not sure where you guys are standing today, but um, yeah, you guys are definitely definitely climbing up there. Uh, <laughs> So you guys are basically solving a um, the privacy issue or working mm -hmm. to you know solve that, yep. um, and I know it's it's difficult to compare coins um, since there's so many different elements to each. It's like you know is it right. Android or Apple, but um, but would you guys say uh, that you guys are doing something a little bit better than like Monero right now? Uh, as, as far yeah, as I mean, the privacy technology goes, do you believe that your privacy is better than Monero's privacy protocols? I think it's, it's a matter of trade-offs, right? Like, mm -hmm. Monero has pretty good tech, and I think they've, they've addressed uh, one of their major issues, which was the transaction size with the implementation of bulletproofs. Mm -hmm. So, like, previously, I think one of the biggest uh, drawbacks of Monero was 
like you like each transaction was 12 to 25 kilobytes and there was no way to prune uh, the blockchain it was just getting bigger and bigger and it's not easy to do a light wallet implementation if anyone has used monero they would realize that monero is not easy to use and um the anonymity set on a per transaction basis is also not very high i mean even when they increase it like previously they were like mixing it with like four or five people and now they're mixing it with like 10 people um the, the power of zero knowledge proofs is that you're no longer mixing based on a per transaction basis and basically you're mixing with everybody else that has minted a coin uh, of that particular denomination so that could be like in the many many thousands right so yeah instead of like 10, uh that's a lot better and monero also has uh certain drawbacks in the sense that uh there's a sort of like a single failure point where it has actually happened a, a couple of times with other coins like shadow cash which i think renamed itself the particle that uh if there was a flaw in that cryptography everything's like retrospectively exposed and yeah. that would also happen with quantum uh cryptography where you know everything would be retrospectively exposed and the uh, this is it will be like just bitcoin well, currently, like stuff like Zcash or like Zcoin, although we use different systems, although uh, quantum cryptography would actually break um, the, you you allow people to forge coins, but it does not break the anonymity. So I think that's quite an interesting differentiating factor. I wouldn't say you know there's any best privacy coin. There's always like a, a set of trade offs like. Zcash has probably like the highest uh, theoretical anonymity, like it hides transaction values. It has really fast verification times, great performance. But to achieve it, it has things like trusted setup. Trusted setup where you have to trust people to generate certain right. initial parameters. And if they weren't destroyed correctly or that process was backdoor, someone could forge coins out of tin and, and no one would know. Uh, yeah, and actually, like someone like Peter Todd, who's one of the Bitcoin core developers, even though he participated in that ceremony, he actually criticized that very, very heavily. I think he's even like scratched out his entire post. He he believes that the trusted setup is potentially backdoor. Uh, so that's like you know a dropper, and they are also kind of what we using of what a lot of people call moon math, where. The cryptographic assumptions that go behind Zcash are pretty experimental. They haven't been really tested. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's that sort of like question. Well, you know, first of all, you have that trusted setup. Then you're, you're using this experimental cryptography. Right. Then you have unauditable supply. That means you don't know if someone's hacking you, right? I yeah. think even Komodo uh, suffered a, a similar thing that there was a inflation, but they managed to detect it somehow. So there's this risk, and like you know, even recent Bitcoin had the potential inflation. But what happened if something happens like that? You want to be able to detect it. Yeah. And Zcoin, I would say we offer very high anonymity sets. You know, uh, we're using unlike uh, Zcash that uses something called knowledge of exponents. We use something uh, that's based on RSA cryptography. Uh, our trusted setup is actually really basic that, you know, we actually took a academic challenge that was like 20 years ago that no one would have probably had the, the notion that you'll be used in the cryptocurrency. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think we have the similar trusted setup problem, uh, you know, um, and, and we have high anonymity sets and we're using cryptography that's used throughout industry. So the idea is that you know, if RSA breaks, if our cryptography breaks, the least of your worries would be Zcoin and probably you'd be worrying about other stuff. So I would say that Zcoin offers like really well balanced, uh, you know, balancing usability, scalability and high privacy. Uh, we're actually improving on this, that uh, we're working on something called Sigma, which would uh, even improve scalability and remove trusted setup completely. So I do okay. think that Zcoin is doing really unique work there. We have like, you know, two, two cryptographers on board on our team. Uh, so yeah, you know, um, I think that's really interesting. Now, do you think that within, um, <clears throat> say like a, a year time, when you guys have a little bit more 
more time to you know develop these new technologies and kind of integrate it into your coin uh do you think mm. that that would be able to boost up your um kind of the market cap essentially um not caring too much about the price but just you know how viewers see your coin um and seeing if it is actually you know a you know top 50 in the next year do you think that that is something that could happen um based on the technologies that you guys are working on i think honestly right now like based on market it's not about technology <laughs> like, <laughs> that's true that's so much like so-called privacy coins out there they don't even have privacy and people don't understand the tech i don't i think it'll be a while until like people realize like the stuff that we're doing i mean obviously what we're doing is pretty technical like how am i going to explain trusted setup and all this other stuff to like a layman right like their attention spans are already so short all they want to hear is that we are the best privacy coin and right uh you know that's not how we roll like yeah we are among the top privacy coins i do think like we're actually quite far into development you know we can uh, probably deploy over the next few months uh so it's not as if it's something really really far into the future uh whether we, it results in a rise in market cap i think the one number one thing that we are trying to achieve with our technical development is to attract the academic and developer community to take us seriously like we are not just you know implementing the zero coin protocol we're coming out with something really interesting and new and when people are then like when the researchers are then like motivated to develop and like develop this technology and then people start taking us more seriously I think that would be like a slow, uh, like, hey, you know, Zcoin is doing something real. The development is real. They're not like a Zcash fault, which we aren't, by the way. <laughs> right. And uh, and I think that really has to be coupled with actual real usage, which we hope to have some news on that in the next month or so. So uh, I can't review what that is. <laughs> it's not a pawn up partnership. I can tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, Darn, yeah. you're not going to join the ranks of everyone else no <laughs> i know some people want x hamster and all that stuff but yeah unfortunately no <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll find another oh, suitor yes, cool <laughs> all right yeah uh, but, but interestingly yeah. uh recently just just to highlight uh, someone so uh, you know thailand's going through a very interesting uh political situation right now and uh, there was this youtube video called uh, rap against dictatorship and uh someone found a very interesting use of our zcoin blockchain where they uploaded the video to ipfs so it's just like a decentralized power system and actually imprinted the the link to the ipfs on to the zcoin blockchain so the sort of like fight censorship and i thought it was quite cool <laughs> yeah cool um <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked in my head uh, yeah, so a little bit, but uh, okay. So, kind of going back to the the tech here. Um, are you guys a uh, proof of work, proof of stake, delegated proof of stake? Uh, how do, what is the the mining <coughs> system that happens there? Oh, we have totally proof of work. Um, uh, there's a lot of like criticisms of like, wow, you know, proof of work is like old school. It, damages yeah. the environment and stuff like that and obviously proof of work is not the most efficient thing you know if you talk about shared performance of course something like delegated proof of stake uh, would be really quick right or like something like ripple right it's not not actually R like right. consensus type of stuff well i mean you know I think only 50 percent holding yeah. by it <laughs> anyway yeah <laughs> so yeah what what advantages or uh dif disadvantages do you see with using uh or I guess primarily, what are the advantages of using proof of work for you guys? Like, why would you go with proof of work when there's already so many, uh, you know, kind of a, a bad taste with proof of work over proof of stake? I don't think there's a bad taste of proof of work. I think it's just that a lot of people don't understand the other elements that make proof of work so good. Like, is that, oh yeah, it's established, but let's come up with something new and sexy. And, you know, I mean, we've seen this, you know, like with Neo uh, you know, trying to do the crap on Ethereum, saying that Ethereum can only achieve how many TPS, but what they don't know that Neo only has like a 
like a couple of centralized servers that achieve right. their, their so-called high TPS. So I think with all sorts of systems like DPoS, you are sacrificing uh, some sort of decentralization for greater performance. And that's fine if it's a smart contract platform and things like that. But we have to remember that Zcoin is aiming to be a digital currency first and foremost we want to be a currency and what's the number one thing about about a, a currency for it to be successful it's about adoption and widespread you uh, a widespread like distribution yeah if you know i have a coin that you know uh, only a couple of big wells own uh, i would consider that a failure right and some you're right people may not think so but as a coin, as a currency, that would be an absolute failure, even if the coin is really highly priced. And pr not, I don't think there's right now any system that distributes coin as well as proof of work. As long as the proof of work can be, uh, you know, you can mine it with hardware that you have uh, easily lying around, at least it's on a fair playing ground. Right. And I guess that's where our technology MTP comes in, where we're trying to achieve like a fair le level of a playing field for everyone and not uh, just rely on ASIC manufacturers there. So are you guys, I mean, it sounds like you guys are pretty worried about uh, centralization. Um, so what is what is preventing kind of the, the ASIC, you know, takeover and uh, possibly, you know, uh, I mean, room for a 51% attack. I'm not actually so concerned with the decentralization security. I mean, yes, that definitely is an issue, but to me, it's more about the distribute the distribution of new rewards to as many people as possible rather than just okay. a handful. Uh, but I would say that you know, ASICs have definitely pros and cons, right? I think right. one of the, the the great things about ASICs, especially once a coin is mature, is that once you buy an ASIC, it can probably only mine a handful of coins and you're not going to turn it off. It's just going to be like, you're right. going to be mining Bitcoin and that's it, you know? Uh, so your hash rate is going to be there until your electricity doesn't cover your, your I mean, the, the profits don't cover your costs. Right. So unlike, like, let's say if I allow gpu miners to cpu miners gpu cpu miners can drop off they play games or they mine other coins so your hash rate is going to be fluctuating a lot and you're more subject to stuff like nice hash or like you know rented cloud services that attack right. the coin and, and and stuff like that so it is a trade-off it's not perfect per se but we feel that the the biggest important thing for a currency is well first of all anti-censorship that means like you know of uh if I want to get coins in Venezuela, I can just turn on my computer and get some coins because like ASICs are banned in, in, in Venezuela. You can't import an ASIC there. And yeah. the other thing would be also, um, you know, we, we want everyone, as many people who can get the coins as possible in as fair uh, a manner as possible. So I do think that proof of work is kind of unbeatable in that sense. I don't know of a way that better distributes coins. And I think, especially in the early stages of a coin, that's most important because yeah. at the end of the day, your developers can do great work, but if your community and only a few people hold it, your, your project's dead. And I think we really need to focus on increasing the amount of people that hold Z coin or use Z coin or like, you know, just get some Z coin inside their, their like wallets. Now, you guys uh, just talk more about distribution here. Um, have you guys done airdrops, token burns, anything like that? No, uh, I mean, it's just pure proof of work. You mine it. Um, uh, we have some like master notes, which is the centralization uh, issue. But, you know, it's kind of balanced out by the proof of work. Uh, so we haven't done any like airdrops. Oh, well, we kind of did like an earn.com airdrop. But I don't think that it's like a real airdrop. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, yes, sign up for our <laughs> newsletter and like get some free coins, but yeah. <laughs> now, um, are you guys, are you guys worried at all about um, kind of the government adoption uh, before the public adoption? Like, uh, are you guys worried about the SEC, uh, the jurisdiction being compliant, that kind of thing? Or are you guys just not worried about it because, hey, it's crypto and the whole idea is getting away from government, essentially? 
Well, I think it's. I mean, you, there's two routes to go, right? As a coin, you can either go like the Monero fuck governments and uh, right, you know, like <laughs> like go all dark and stuff, uh, or you can go the like the Zcash route, uh, you know, which you know got like Gemini, Gemini, uh, yeah, like sort of uh, approval. So obviously they are they are talking with regulators and. Ideally, I think in the ideal world, we would like to engage with regulators, and we have been like telling them, like, look, you know, if you ban us, you're actually going to lose control. So the the argument I've been putting to the regulators is like, think about it. You're you're already allowing yeah. Bitcoin, right? And as long as I as a privacy coin, even if I'm using Monero, if I'm on an exchange, I have AML KYC. Right, like yeah. If, I, if I'm on a regulated exchange, no matter how amazing my anonymity system is, if I am on a regulated exchange, I still need to reveal my identity, and I'm still subject to all this anti mandering know your customer laws. If I allow privacy coins to be on the exchange, that's where the majority of the liquidity will be because it's more convenient, it's easy to use, and stuff like that. Right. Right. But if I ban it. Then I push it out to DEX, like decentralized exchanges, P2P exchanges, and we've already seen, like you know, in countries where exchanges are like kind of banned, stuff like local bitcoins come up, and in that case, it's so much harder for for governments to actually uh, right. control, right? So I do think it's kind of futile to like ban privacy coins because it's just like it's kind of just silly to do it because to actually get control, you should be actually Just allowing them on the exchanges and 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 dealing with it there with the conversion to fiat and stuff like that. For sure, I think that's yeah. So that's a kind of our take on it. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like a prohibition, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can ban all the <clears throat> if you ban something that people want, they're gonna find <clears throat> yeah. a way to do it. Whether they have to, you know, go into someone's basement or whatever to make an exchange, but they're gonna, yeah, they're going to find a way and. Um, I mean, society as a general is kind of a rebel. So, tell someone yeah. that they can't have I mean, something, like, and they're gonna want it more. Oh, like you know, I convert Z coin to Bitcoin and then bring it back into them. So, like, what's the difference, right? Like, mm-hmm. I still go through AML KYC on Bitcoin. What's the difference if I go through AML KYC with Z coin? So, I think uh, regulators don't really understand the whole situation <laughs> uh, so well at the moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's our kind of take on it. Yeah. So we we are trying to educate the the regulators. Hopefully they see the light. Uh, but it is always an ongoing process. Uh, at the moment. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's go a little bit more into the team and you know future of or what you guys believe to be the future of Zcoin. Uh, so who's on the mm-hmm. team and what kind of backgrounds do they have? I know we talked about um kind of the creator. Um, Yeah, and yeah. with his background in Vertcoin, uh, who else is on the team um, with like a major influence, <laughs> and what kind of blockchain background do they have or corporate background? Uh, so I guess our lead core developers, uh, his name is Peter Sugarlove, or as my wife calls him, Sugarlove. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> he he actually, uh, you know, he has a master's degree in computer science and math. Uh, he actually did a lot of like. Cryptography stuff,、uh, but he told me like I was like you know so much about cryptography, but why haven't you gotten the thing? He's like oh it's about money and stuff like that. Yeah. So he's really,、um, you know, I think he's like the, the the pillar of our development team currently. Okay.、Uh, we also have、uh, someone Andre Basrukov.、Uh, he has was like you know seventeen years, seventeen eighteen years of experience in C plus plus, work in Deutsche Bank and and、uh, you know so. Uh, he's also、right. like you know a, a recent addition that's really good.、Uh, we have someone called Type、uh, Realdan, which actually started out as a Solidity developer, and he actually like works something like zk Snarks on Ethereum, some sort of smart contract on that. And he then、uh, joined the Zcoin team, and he actually developed a smart contract called Zerocoin Ethereum, which is more or less done. But then we kind of like semi abandoned that because we realized that、uh, the gas costs. Oh yeah, for sure. Those transactions would be too high until Casper maybe comes about. So、uh, we'll probably relook into that. And he has a, a MSc from from Trinity College Dublin.、Um, you know, we have Martin Karapetian who you know worked for Google、uh, as a software engineer. 
and you know um, he has a PhD in cryptography and also a software engineer C++ it's a very rare sort of combination of like you know good C++ and cryptographic knowledge uh, you know with a bunch of other guys uh, you know on our team we can go to our team page uh, but um, I think uh, we also have like the cryptography advisor to Aaron Jimbanya, who also has a PhD in cryptography, and he's actually working with our uh, in creating our next gen privacy protocol. Uh, and that's like more on the development side. And yeah, that's basically our okay. team. Uh, we have like twenty plus people. So yeah. wow, that's a fairly large team. Uh, who do you guys mm. look for uh, when you're hiring? Like, how do you guys pick your staff, and where do you find them? Is it mostly from mm -hmm. GitHub contribution or community um, engagement? Like, how do you guys find your people? Uh, we have used some recruitment firms. Some of them just joined us because they, uh, you know, like some type just saw us off a YouTube video and and I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, why don't I help out? And then we all position <laughs> others. You know, we you know went through recruitment agencies like we're looking for something of this characteristics uh right and then we'll interview them uh some are true like you know connections uh like for example djm was brought in by another of our early developers called aizen uh so i think it's like a mixture of stuff and like friends bring in friends and like uh those type of things yeah <laughs> okay um and how's the how's the development team compensated or how's development funded uh is it pre-mine insta-mine do you guys pay them in coins? We have, uh, we have a founder's tax similar to Zcash, but we recently uh, halved the founder's reward. So like of every block, 14% goes to the founders and the development team. So I think about like 6% of the block goes towards funding our research. And that stops in about maybe one and a half years or so. Uh, and okay. our idea is by the time that reaches, we would have uh, like some sort of on-chain governance where people like a certain part of the blog is uh, similar to Dash, but we want to do it better. I think Decred is a really interesting system, uh, but we aren't necessarily replicating that. We have some ideas on how to do that, but eventually we want to have part of the blog revert to uh, fund development, but it'll be kind of like voted in by the community. Okay. But we want to do it in such a way where it isn't just the whales talking, because like, yeah, you know, we've seen like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Dash, you know, Pivax is just a, like a bunch of it was, uh, yeah, it turns to me, into it's a, a bit game. of a governance path. Yeah, yeah. So it's not really true governance in that sense. Decra is an interesting system, but not necessarily something we can replicate. But yeah, um, so yeah, the, we'll the... see about that. The block rewards going to you guys, uh, you're saying that's ending in about a year? Uh, about a year and a half, about like, yeah, okay. one and a half years. Or so. mm -hmm. Is there a lockup uh, period we... at all? No, 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 no. There's no lockup period. I mean, okay. we see the pay our development expenses. We do have uh, our fiat funds that we, you know, uh, sell to like, you know, some people want to buy OTC, uh, so right. we sell that. And uh, developers are great. You know, some just want to be paid in Z coins, some want to be paid, you know, in fiat, that's fine. Uh, so we have a variety of mechanisms, but we are like, you know, moving towards like moving in fiat and bonuses in Z coin. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, are you guys partnering with any organizations um, on or off blockchain right now? Hmm. I mean, we have a couple of partnerships, uh, like you know, like Midas Protocol and stuff like that. I mean, they're mostly corporations in terms of marketing, not so much in development. Uh, there's some projects that, are like you know, master note, master notes of master note projects that want to partner with us, and we're okay with that as well. Uh, but in terms of like contribution of working together, we tried working with some other projects. I'm not gonna name them, but yeah, yeah. turn out to be yeah, not not too ideal. Like uh, I don't know what's up with their leadership, but but yeah, basically uh, we're quite self-sufficient. Uh, you know, we do engage uh, researchers or academics from other projects as well. Like you know, talk about cryptography in general, but there's no like 
ink partnership per se. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you guys have any uh like base? Are you guys working on any you know pay terminals like a payment API for uh websites? You know whether it's WordPress or Shopify or you know just some way hmm. to really get the um kind of more you know user friendly adoption happening? Yeah, sure. I think what I mean we already integrated with Coin Payments stuff because you have to pay a bit of fees to it. Uh, we're going to be porting BTC Pay server, which is like your own self-hosted type of things. And uh, once we kind of like get MPP up and rolling, we're going to be focused really on usability and adoption. And we also have our new uh, wallet interface that's already in internal release stage. So I think like just this past year, we're just like getting the tech down. And then yeah. now I think the next year will be more about adoption and usage and stuff like that. And, we have some interesting news coming in November, and we're fingers crossed that everything goes well. <laughs> do you want to just pre-leak all that news uh, right now? That way we don't have to wait? Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it's quite sensitive, so... Uh... <laughs> One of these days I'm going to get like sensitive information out of a dev team and <laughs> just have it leak right here. It'll be amazing. Um, <laughs> so do you guys uh, have any... Uh, kind of go back over to team for a second. Do you guys have any advisors um, that are part of the team that like not actively working in development or anything, but just as an advisor role? Uh, we have three advisors. I would say uh, so Alexander N. He or Eisen. He was one. He was our earliest developer. Uh, he's he now you know is super rich now, so uh, he's now <laughs> <laughs> working on his own project and. <laughs> And balling, so he okay. just, uh, you know, now an advisor. Uh, and Aaron Jimbanian, although you know he's listed as an advisor, but he's not. He's like actively involved. Like you know, he's developing on next gen privacy protocol. We have weekly meetings and stuff like this. I wouldn't call him a a passive uh, advisor. Maybe top hop. I haven't heard from him in a while, so I guess. Uh, he's the, the only inactive one. Uh, yeah, but okay. Just being totally frank here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, just kind of coming to the end here. Um, just final, mm -hmm. you know, a few questions. But, um, what social media platforms are you guys on right now? And uh, like official platforms where <laughs> you guys actually have, you know, official representation on that. Um, and how active are they? I think almost. Arab platform. I mean, we have Reddit, Twitter. I think we're most active on Twitter. Uh, okay. Telegram's also pretty active. We have a Discord. Yeah, I know uh, your Discord's huge. Uh, yeah, in comparison uh, to a lot of projects. Then, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think we're most active on Telegram because that's where I find it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the most easy to talk to. Uh, and because we have Facebook pages and then Instagram. <laughs> uh so yeah <laughs> i always find instagram really funny like i don't know what to post there because it's like visual and yeah you know you don't, it's a bit hard like yeah <laughs> yeah let me spread information but, yeah. through a, a picture a meme um yeah <laughs> how do you guys get we're, your... we're on a major hmm. uh, how do you guys get your uh your news out like anytime that there's an update or something like that do you guys just broadcast it on all social media platforms is there like a Mm -hmm. a go-to platform for like the latest news or uh like, well guys... we have a zcoin news channel on telegram we also i mean we're integrated into blockfolio uh signals so we were one of the early teams to get on we also on coin gecko b uh and you know we also post it on binance post it on actually almost all social channels we post post our stuff okay but uh yeah like like I think Blockfolio is a great way to stay in touch. I mean, everyone uses Blockfolio, and yeah, as, uh, uh, we do push uh, notifications for like any major updates that you need. Awesome. Um, are there any misconceptions about the coin or false information? Uh, speaking of social media, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, your fake news. <laughs> Is there fake news that you would like to call out um, or just kind of clear up in general? Hmm. I would say the number one thing is that people say that we're a fork of cash and 
or like you know why are you using even fluffy has attacked us and stuff like that which i guess is cool <laughs> <laughs> so so first of all we're not the fork of zcash we have no shared technology with zcash well besides using a bitcoin core uh and we use totally different cryptographics okay so uh, that's one thing uh secondly i would say that you know a lot of people say oh zero coin is like old technology you know why are you using it when there's like zk snarks yeah people don't understand that in cryptography newer isn't necessarily better like if you want to Very criticize true. i mean like Mon Mon monero ring signatures are new they're really old tech but it works well and <laughs> and, and it's not that uh you know zero coins at the standstill we're just like standing still we actually improved the protocol we you know hired uh, a cryptographer to 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 actually improve it we actually found some security flaws that we patch and improved it uh and now we're moving towards like sigma and then we're even building on pot on top of that and i think the idea is that of course we don't know which privacy protocol is the best i mean there's really interesting new things that are coming out like mimbo wimbo and 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 all this new new cool tech but I think we shouldn't shit on real development uh, as long you know it's it's real and, yeah and it actually achieves what it's trying to do because when you have multiple privacy implementations they can only you can only make the whole system better right like yeah rather than like like if I just developed Monero and there was like a fatal flaw uh, like crypto note and there's a fatal flaw and like that's it we don't have anything else right <laughs> but if you are like or like zk snarks oh it's uh totally broken uh, you know which is quite probable like with all the 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 the, the exotic cryptography they're using uh there should be multiple privacy implementations and it's not necessarily a better we're all moving towards the same goal and right. i it's so i I think what I would say is that yes, of course, we we're in, uh, developing our own independent privacy implementation. But at the end of the day, you know, we as Zcoin, instead of starting new coins all the time, if there's a good privacy technology, we will adopt it. You know, <laughs> like that's yeah. I guess our commitment to it. You know, if there's like for example, Dandelion came along, uh, it was developed for Bitcoin. You know, no one really wanted to use it or test it, and we adapted it took it and changed it to be you know supporting uh, our zero coin protocol and bam we have it because you know it's good tech so i think that's our kind of like uh, what we're trying to do like yes we are independent tech but we feel that uh you know we can always adopt other technologies that are good for yeah. us and rather than keep on starting new coins or starting new forks or forks of like oh yeah a one free z coin one free whatnot whatnot <laughs> you know what i'm trying to yeah. say yeah <laughs> yeah i i mean i've i've realized with a lot of development teams like where i mean a lot of people you know see the competition between coins and it, it's yes there's competition you know everyone's still it everyone's fighting for their place but at the same time there's also a lot of collaboration with the competition and i think that's something yeah. that a lot of people don't really realize um, is that, you know, most developers aren't going, you know, neck to neck with each other. They're working together. They just have different ideas of how the end goal should look, um, exactly. which is great. The yeah, competition with collaboration, I think, is extremely helpful, especially in the, the early days of crypto, which I, I believe that we are still in. Um, mm -hmm. We have been in it. <laughs> uh, this is like, you know, calling, um, you know, the 90s as like a mature internet um so yep. yeah definitely we still have a long ways to go but i yeah i definitely see the, the collaboration being a very very useful tool and any developer that doesn't think that collaboration in the space is necessary i think is ridiculous um and yeah. they're probably their project's I, I, not going to go very far well, i think the only thing i have against like right now is like there's just so much crap out there uh you know even within the top 100 oh yeah you know, a lot of people don't understand the tech they just buy hype uh, and it's hard to stay honest and transparent and and with because like you know marketing talk, talk is like we are the best privacy coin yeah. and, <laughs> and also like, there's, yeah yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of 
interesting news out there like people say you know hey we just we partnered with google it's the biggest partnership ever yeah. and then you find out you know they're just using google drive and there's exactly no, like no. a whole, whole wave of microsoft partnerships when they're just using yeah. Azure and, and all that crap i mean there's plenty of uh, plenty of coins see- in the top 20 that are kind of doing that kind of a thing yeah yeah and i hope that as the market matures you know we're not we've been around for a while and you know i think despite like comparatively meager funding i'm really really proud of what we've achieved like can you imagine like we got all our funding wiped out in the first like few months right and, yeah and, and and you know now we're like listed on on top exchanges and uh and i do think that once people i think that's also a bit of a racist thing i don't know if that's true but i've heard it a few times <laughs> where we're seen as an Asian coin, and, and and that's quite unfortunate. Like I remember there was yeah. this one investment fund that was just telling me, like, yeah, I love Z coin, but you need more white people on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, um, yeah, that's the problem yeah. with technology today is there's not enough white people in technology. <laughs> yeah, and and you know it's like oh, Z coin comes as as too. It's crazy. Or, even on Twitter, like everyone's like, oh, this guy keeps on calling us a Chinese shit coin. I'm like, who's from China? None of us are from China. And like, <laughs> one of our seat investors was from China. And I'm like, okay, so that makes us Chinese. Yeah. Like, okay, you know, like, so what? I mean, there's nothing wrong with being Chinese, but it's just so yeah. strange. This, uh, you know, I think part of what's wrong with america right now but let's not get into yeah, that. We, we go down that rabbit hole what's wrong with america oh um, <laughs> then we'll go into government and religion next um okay so the uh <laughs> just moving on um if you guys could and we'll just this is the final question here um right and just have a little fun with it mm-hmm. speculation entirely if you could integrate your project Z coin and have a, a true partnership with any company in the world right now. What Ooh. company would you pick um, with the intent of global adoption? Hmm. That's a really good question. <laughs> You've got your pick of every <laughs> right? PayPal? I don't know. I mean, like, we obviously. You- Globally, it's a payment system, right? Yeah. And obviously, something like PayPal would be amazing, though. Very unlikely, but you said pick anyone. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you can get on to PayPal and people can start sending payments to each other that way. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, some people might quote banks and stuff like that, but like, as an inst- yeah. like you know, in terms of payments, uh, you know, PayPal is pretty up there. It's like global, just with immense fees and and lots of weird policies but yeah it, it kind of works right yeah um, but everyone knows paypal and think, everyone can use it yeah i i don't think something like like a partnership with mastercard or mx even even makes sense uh like now what about oh, like uh yeah. like say you got it integrated into like the apple app store or amazon marketplace um would you take paypal over one of those situations Probably not. I mean, I think we don't want to be like just like platform specific, like PayPal right. is like used everywhere. And sure, yes, you know, there's Apple Pay and stuff like that. But I think we want to be more like embedded into the payment infrastructure rather than on just on the platform. Of course, mm-hmm. now some of these platforms are turning into infrastructure. But I think we want to be actually with developing something in Thailand that would allow you to spend Zcoin nationwide uh, in Thailand without even the merchant knowing he's receiving like cryptocurrency payments. So uh, oh, hopefully awesome. in the next few months, uh, that's quite cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, hmm. yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Um, unless, you know, there's any juicy leaks that you want to just cough out. And <laughs> <whisper it now. laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I would say that, you know, maybe in the first week of November, we would have some exciting news. I'm I'm really hoping it goes well. It's it's been something that Parman you know worked really hard on, and it is really exciting. Even if it doesn't go well, it'll make for a really good story. 
but uh, it actually, you know, it really would be like a real world adoption thing. Um, and I think I'm personally very excited about that. And I would say maybe just keep an eye out for us in November. And of course, um, you know, if you want to visit us, we're like zcoin.io, you know, yeah. find out about us in Telegram. I'm there usually most of the time. If you have any questions. What's the uh, Telegram channel? Uh, Zcoin project. Uh, and then oh. there's Zcoin official, which is the like news channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's about it. I do want people to read this. This like if people really want to get into the nitty gritty of our technology, we actually have. Uh, we should see. Uh, just Google up Zcoin privacy competition, and we have a very well uh, write up that compares uh, us against all the major privacy coins. Uh, and it's pretty fair. It's been like you know, look at the at the cryptographer. We're not like saying we're the most amazing. And I do think it gives a really good overview of the privacy technology that's out there. So I do recommend if anyone's like actually interested in like the the nuts and bolts of it, do do take a read on that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, uh, you know what? Thank you, Ruben. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm um love having you out here sorry we had to uh you know deal with the live issue for a little bit um no problem <laughs> so i'll go hope you came across this you know i'm someone that knows what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah yeah um <laughs> so i'm looking forward to the uh obvious you know paypal announcement mm -hmm. in november now um <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank yeah. you for joining It'll us. Just be a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> it was a blast. Um, I am going to uh, we're going to turn off the live stream, but I will turn on the open channel for discussion in this channel. Um, so okay. everyone will be able to ask any questions that they have. Uh, if you want to stick Are around, you, you can. Or, 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 yeah, it'll or... just be over voice. So you guys can. Uh, okay. Yeah, people can ask questions if they want, and uh, you can either stick around to answer those questions or we can speculate mm -hmm. and just make up our own answers it'll be super fun so okay, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah i'm going to uh shut off the stream thank you everyone for tuning in thank you so and much. we will catch you next monday 8 a.m pacific standard 1500 gmt thank you